EAA Chapter 166 in Hartford, Connecticut, home of the Vans RV 12 build. And history has proven that light sport airplanes generally don't fare well in the hands of ham-fisted pilots and hard landings. And Vans Aircraft has learned a little something from the fleet of RV-12s out there flying around. And it's come up with a service bulletin that's intended to beef up the landing gear beam in existing RV-12s. That's the focus of tonight's build here at the RV-12 construction hangar. To help sort it all out, let's find project lead Rick Montero. So Rick, this little RV-12 meets ASTM standards for typical landing loads. And this beefing up of the landing gear beam going to make it stronger, right? Yeah, that's right. Let's talk about progress on this airplane. Made quite a bit since uh, we've been in front of the camera last. Well, Larry, since the last time we, we got together and talked about progress, um, we've actually installed the upper forward fuselage uh, and the instrument panel. So we've built the uh, map box, got that installed. Um, so everything you see here in terms of the uh, upper fuselage um, has been added since the last time. We've also completed the battery box and installed that. Um, and if you come around on the sides, you can see that we've added the uh, canopy uh, ribs that are on the side here, along with the uh, little L bracket that goes here for the uh, pneumatic piston that holds the uh, canopy up and in uh, position. If you come around uh, the, and look in the, uh, you can see where, where we've ended up with the uh, instrument panel. So we've started installing the, the face plates for the instrument panel. So we've got on the right side, you see the map box, which has been completed. And uh, then you've got the center console for the instrument panel. And we have the uh, left side as well. We just haven't installed that yet. Um, so that's uh, the progress that we've made so far since the last time. We've uh, taken a break uh, to work on a service bulletin that came out in August of last year that applies to RV-12s, the original model. So some operators have been experiencing um, uh, with hard landings and then schools that use RV-12s for training, they've experienced, where they experience a lot of hard landings experiencing issues with the uh, landing gear beam uh, and the bulkhead. So rivets popping in that area and then getting cracking between bulkheads and, and at flanges. So uh, Vans put out a uh, service bulletin where you can get an upgrade. Install an upgrade to stiffen up the landing beam and uh, the bulkhead between the two. And the state that we're currently at in our build we decided that it was a good time to do this service bulletin uh, because if we wait till it's done, right, if we wait till we're finished, we have to do a lot of disassembly to do this service bulletin upgrade. Um, so the service bulletin talks about it taking about 14 hours, but a lot of that is disassembly of the aircraft um, just so that you can get access to do the installation of the stiffening plates and the, the uh, ribs that you have to add. So where we're currently at, we figure it's going to take us less than half that time. We're three sessions later. Um, the work took us a bit longer than we had anticipated, um, you know, based on the guidance that Vans gave us. But, um, you know, we learned quite a lot along the way and uh, we've got probably a few tips that we should share based on what we learned. One of the things that you're changing out are these wear plates that go uh, between the landing gear leg and the landing gear beam that's in the, air, in the airframe. So these are the stock original and what you're replacing them with is this new beefier, thicker wear plate uh, now that goes uh, between the landing gear leg and the, uh, the beam within the airframe. And uh, so this is one of the changes that you're making. Now to install this, you have to make some modifications to the landing gear beam. So there's some channels that you have to drill in the uh, sides of the beam and uh, there's some holes, additional holes that you have to drill so that you have the ability to install this wear plate. 
What it looks like on top when you're looking down at the uh, landing gear beam, um, you're adding these two extra bolts with this uh, um, reinforcing plate. You're adding the um, wear plate underneath the landing gear beam. So this is on the other side. And it's actually held in place by the, uh, the four bolts that you see there, uh, in addition to the two that go through this support plate. Um, in addition, there are some additional uh, plates uh, that are further inboard that are held in place by uh, this piece as well. So there are uh, three bolts that go through that, that and uh, a couple of channel pieces that capture the uh, landing gear leg. Um, it has a sort of a wedge shape on the underside of the landing gear beam, and uh, there's some uh, wedges that capture it and hold it in place. So the other part of the um, upgrade is that in this whole area here you're adding an additional 25 uh, rivets. So these are um, you know 470s, uh, 4-8 to 10s depending on where they are. And so you, they give you a template to drill out the additional 25 holes and uh, then you have to install them. The other thing you install is this angle. So that reinforces this piece uh, that's on the, uh, that comes out from the skin. And you have to drill out uh, five holes in the bottom, install the, uh, the angle, and then match drill the rest of it uh, into that piece and then rivet it in place again with uh, the AN470s. Okay, so as part of the, uh, the upgrade uh, to actually do this, this uh, service bulletin, it requires you to drill these channels out. And uh, you do that using these drill guides. So you place the drill guide on the side like that, you clamp it in place, and uh, then you drill through the drill guide and that also creates a channel in the side of the beam. Uh, the thing that we found was though that the, uh, the channel it drilled uh, wasn't deep enough to get a nice uh, fit with these bolts that are supposed to go in place. The, uh, there was an interference fit and we couldn't get them in. Um, so what we found worked was that we had to deepen these channels using a um, essentially a Dremel with a rotary tool and a flex uh, cable on it. it. worked really well. You start at the bottom of the uh, channel and you work your way up and then you just do it in strokes until you get the depth to the right level that you can get these bolts in. That, that worked really well. But the rotary tool leaves a really rough surface. So again, using the uh, Dremel, we use this buffing wheel uh, to run it up and down in the channel and uh, that made it nice and smooth and uh, the end result was a, uh, a really good fit. So the, uh, the bolts and the support plate on top um, fit right in. Now the uh, next step that you have to do once you uh, get these channels in is to drill these four holes uh, to actually support the uh, wear plate from underneath. They give you a template to use, which is this, that goes in here like so, that helps you line up and drill the holes in the right location. Um, the only issue we ran into is that uh, in the instructions they tell you to use a uh, a dash four screw to hold these in place and problem is is the holes in the template are too large to support that so we found that just by using that template and these bolts through like that it was enough to hold the template in place tight enough for us to be able to drill these four holes through so that worked really well so you know Rick, as we said at the beginning of the video here, it's a lot easier doing this mod with the airplane in the stage it is now, mostly disassembled. If the airplane was assembled, 
on the right side of the airplane uh, to do this landing gear uh, portion of the of the mod to this gear the fuel tank sits right here so the fuel tank would have to come out and that'd be a fair amount of work how many hours do you think you got into this mod uh, all said and done yeah so uh, we've done it over four different sessions uh, about three hours each session so that's a total of 12 hours but I'd say in terms of actual working time somewhere between nine and ten hours of uh, actual effort to to get the mod done now there was a lot of uh, figuring out you know how to do things right like figuring out how to use a using a Dremel to deepen the channels and uh, some other things that we had to figure out but uh, if we had to do it again I'm sure we could do it much more quickly and it helps that you know our our RV 12 isn't done so a lot of the upfront steps that the service bulletin calls out for you to do uh, in terms of removing the seat and you know the gas tank and so on um, we didn't have to worry about doing that so it made the mod in a lot of ways a lot easier for us yeah and I think it's a worthwhile mod uh, really from look, the looks of the hardware it really stiffens it up nicely yeah it does it seems to beefing it up quite a bit adds a lot more stiffness to the uh, landing gear beam and then uh, gives a lot more support to the, the legs of the landing gear what's next in the project uh, the next thing is wings so we're going to be attaching the wings uh, in the next week and uh, you know adding the flapper ons and uh, some of the control linkages and then after that it's the uh, wiring harness I mean if you like our coverage of this uh, RV12 build series hit the thumbs up button down below thanks for watching where's my number two stubby <laughs>